and welcome. I'm Ed and I'm Bruce, and this is the Bruce and Ed show live from New York. Bruce and Ed live from New York. And how is everybody? Did Hello. you have a great Memorial weekend? We did. <laughs> you want to tell them what we did? Oh, we didn't do <laughs> anything. We went to the beach one day, I guess. Yeah, we went to the Hamptons and Otherwise, we had a nice, not much. It was a gorgeous, gorgeous time. It's perfect, perfect beach weather. And uh, just bumming around in um, East Hampton, shopping and browsing and hanging out. But we had a great time. <laughs> so um, today's episode is sponsored by Arvix.com Web Hosting, BlackbirdNaturals.com Antioxidant Superfood Fudge Truffles, and ColumbusDanceCenter.com in Columbus, Ohio. You can also go to Bread. TV.com. That's B R E D T V.com and see the show notes section for today's show. And you'll find the links to all of our sponsors there. I wanted to tell you if you're watching this show live right now, you can chat with us interactively while we're doing the show and give us feedback and chat with us. Um, you, there are several ways. You can use the chat room. Go to breadtv.com, remember that's B-R-E-D-T-V.com, and click on the Join the Show live chat room link, which will uh, take you to the Ustream, and then you click on that page, you click on the chat tab, and you'll be in the chat room. Or you can actually call in via Skype. If you have Skype, just uh, call in to BreadChat, Skype name BreadChat, B-R-E-D-C-H-A-T. If you have Gmail, or also known as Google Talk, you can use Gmail to chat to the address breadchat at gmail.com. If you have Twitter, you can send an at reply to at breadchat. And you guessed it, if you have email, you can even send an old-fashioned email to breadchat at gmail.com. So there's all those different ways that you can send us a message right now live while you're watching. And um, we'll, whatever, we'll maybe you'll have a comment or a question or whatever on what we're saying. So, <clears throat> what's going on? You got anything... Uh, Nothing. Um, that was a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of different ways to communicate, but I guess you have to make make it accessible for everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, nothing. Um, you're the one that wants to talk about a lot of different things, so we can start with whatever you want to talk about. Okay. Well, the um, what I usually do is uh, go through my um, my blog and my Twitter. I have uh, I, I tweet a lot. And uh, let me just bring up my blog here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you can see all the things that I've been yapping about lately. Um, the Let's see. We talked a lot about Facebook the other day and their privacy things. Um, that's... Uh, okay, let me just skim through here real quick. Uh, we talked about free, free open source software. Um, and this is pretty technical, but um, oh well. The, okay, re- related to that Facebook privacy thing, here's one thing that I wanted to bring up. I don't think I mentioned last time. I don't think so. But if you decide not to delete your Facebook account, at least do this. Be sure and do this. Whenever you are done with your Facebook, log out. Log out of your account so that your Facebook cookies don't follow you around to every website you visit. Maybe I did mention that. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's worth worth mentioning twice. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people, there was only like 30,000 people <laughs> that... Well, that signed up to that, to yeah. commit to deleting it. Yeah. Because they don't understand the, um, the implications, really. Um, what do you mean? Most people don't understand? Most people yeah. don't understand. Yeah, they don't understand that everything that their friends on Facebook have access to these third-party applications, which basically is the same thing as saying websites in Russia you don't even know about have access to all that same information and data. So right. it's really, you know, and people say, well, I don't have anything to hide, and if you don't have anything to hide, don't worry about it. But, you know, the thing is that even if you don't say anything private or secret, um, just the simple fact of your friends, who are your friends, who are your coworkers, your bosses, your employers, your, uh, companies that maybe you've uh, interviewed with or had some contact with, um, your you know boyfriends, girlfriends, exes, family members. Do you really want a list of all your family members out there for the whole entire world to see? I mean, that's th- just who you associate with is 
privacy right there. Well, it know? could be held against you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and people say, well, if you go to Facebook.com, I, I can't see who your friends are. Well, you can actually. They're, they're maybe not right on Facebook.com, but these back doors, like we talked about, the there's a site called theopenbook.org. Open book. Right. And it's just an example, but there are many ways that these these Facebook applications can access this data through the back door. And that's, um, that's kind of dangerous. So uh, let's see here. Okay, so now this is a, an interesting topic I blogged about. <laughs> Um, and th- because this is huge, this is affecting everybody. Pretty much, if you have email, you have this, uh, you've experienced this. And I called it uh, spam you didn't send. So you know, y- you get spam, and it's from a friend of yours or family member, and uh, it's maybe just a link, you know, to, and you click it, and it's some you know pharmaceutical company in Canada selling Viagra or some nonsense, and it's not really in Canada at all. Or some it's porn. Or totally, something. yeah, it could be anything. And um, what that means is very simple, um, but people don't know what to do about it. If you have received spam from somebody and they didn't send it, that means that their computer or some computer, at least one of the computers that they use or have used, has been infected with a virus. So the virus gets on the computer and it records everything you type even when you're not online, but it, it records everything you type. So naturally, it is able to record your login ID for your email and your password for your email. So once it grabs your login ID, for example, if you have Gmail, Yahoo Mail, Hotmail, whatever, even your online banking, I mean, it can get it ca- captures everything you type. Yeah. So if you have a, say you have a Yahoo Mail account or something, or Gmail, um, it grabs your ID and your password as you type it, now it sends it to the bad guys, so they now have your login ID and password. So what do they do? They send it out to uh, basically it's like uh, third uh, parties that buy the information. No, 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 no. What they do is they send it out to a virus that's on a network of other people's computers. So those computers oh, yeah. are acting like little bots, like little robots. They call them spam bots. And it might be your computer, it might be a different computer. Like for example, your friend might have a virus that grabbed his login ID and password. Then it sends it to the bad guy. The bad guy then sends it to the virus that's on your computer that you didn't even know you had, so that at night when you're sleeping and the screensaver comes on, your computer is now using that guy's login ID and password to send spam out from your computer. Mm-hmm. So it's sending it from a different account you know, one person's a, a email account and sending it from another person's physical computer and IP address, it makes it very, very, very difficult for these companies to block all this spam because it's just done by these robots, drones um, of computers running viruses, actively running viruses, most of them running Windows, although also viruses are on Mac as well. So the bottom line is this. <clears throat> if anybody tells you that you sent spam and you know you didn't send it, then your computer is infected with a virus. So the, what you must do is disinfect all the computers that you use. Um, you can do it yourself, or if it's you know if it's a company computer, tell the IT department, tell the computer department at your office that you you suspect your computer has a virus, and they'll clean it for you. And uh, but on your own personal computers, the easiest way is to go to malwarebytes. Org. Org, it's yeah. it's called malware bytes and it's spelled M A L W A R E B Y T E S dot org malwarebytes.org and then just all you need is the free program just click on download the free program and this is for windows and um, then when you download the program you'll run the updates to update the latest signature files and then you click scan and do a full system scan and if you have a virus it'll probably find it and it will eliminate it so that's the first thing you have to do is make sure that you eliminate the virus from all your computers. Then the second thing you do is you have to change all your passwords. Change your email password, change your Facebook password, change your online banking password, any any kind of password that has any significance at all. You go in and change your passwords to something completely new you haven't used before. Now, obviously, if this email came from a friend's computer, then you'd give them this advice, and that's what they need to do. They need to disinfect their computer, and they need to change their passwords. So anyway, but it's it's like a 
plague. It's running rampant. Lately, a lot. Yeah, I've had at least three or four in the last month. And yeah, people I mean, immediately tell them, you know, you've got some kind of Trojan or virus or something, and and they just kind of like ignore me. <laughs> they they don't, don't really care. So well, I'm just like whatever. You think if you say you have a Trojan, they're gonna think you're know, they're gonna say, oh no no, I use. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Durex. <laughs> lifestyles. <laughs> Durex and lifestyles. No, no, but they don't know what that is. I mean, you have to tell them they have a virus. Well, I tell them they have a virus. Well, but Plain besides simple. that, they don't know what to do about it. So this is but what you do about it. The thing that is also is that people associate viruses with something attacking me. Like, it's attacking me, which this is kind of an innocuous kind of virus, which it's still attacking me, but I don't even know it. It happens you know overnight well most of the most of the viruses that are going around today in 2010 are um not like see like in the old days in the old old days of computers a virus would do something terrible to you it would go in and wipe out all your data make your computer unusable and it was just for for the system you know kicks and jollies of of some 14 year old who wrote it right and it wasn't really it was just, you know, it was like, let's see what we can make it do. But now it's very, very sophisticated. I mean, it's like the difference between a teenager, you know, uh, knocking down mailboxes and uh, like organized crime, you know, international organized crime. This is um, this is a uh, very, very organized, sophisticated thing. So now the viruses, I mean, the people who create the viruses have figured out that it's much more effective to put a virus on your computer that is just hidden in there. It's just buried deep down inside and it acts almost like a screensaver. It it only runs when you're not using the computer. Um, right. Or, you know, it'll, it'll run when you're typing and it'll capture what you type and things like that. But as far as sending spam, it'll do it overnight. So when you're sleeping, the computer's on, um, or maybe even when you're using it in the middle of the day, 24 hours a day, it can it can just wake up and uh, send spam. So when you're not using it, it's doing their, their dirty work. And you never know. See, this is perfect for them because if you it's never like know stealthy. you have a virus, yeah, it's very stealthy. If you don't know you have a virus on your computer, then your computer is now a slave drone for the bad guys. Right. So they have this network of millions and millions <laughs> and millions and millions of computers at their disposal. They could push a button. And in fact, they do the things like this. Like if they want to, you know, I mean, God knows, for political or whatever reasons they can, uh, or business reasons, they can attack. Uh, a certain website and do they call it denial of service attack what, all it means is if I was a bad guy and I had all these drones out there I could basically push a button and have one million computers all try and access a se- one website at the same time and have them all go to cnn.com or something and it could if you have too many requests for the same website at the same time that's called a denial of service attack it can actually bring the site down in effect because nobody can get the page to load because there's too many people trying to get it to load at the same moment. You see what I'm saying? Right. So they can use these these networks of millions of computers for all sorts of illicit things. Mostly what it's used for is what pays cash, and that's spam, believe it or not. Right. Apparently, there are people who actually buy things from spam, and you know, it's just, I don't know what that says about humanity, but <laughs> people, people, there's a, a sucker born every day, I guess. So... Well, otherwise they wouldn't be spam. products, so well, I'm mm-hmm. not surprised that they would buy them. It's just we that, that the means of them getting the information about buying it is not legitimate. And, they, and you're assuming they're legi- they're probably not legitimate products, but maybe they are. They could be. You never know. But the thing is that um, spam is just you know obviously if nobody bought it, uh, there wouldn't be spam. They actually, the University of Southern California. Um, I think it was in San Diego or somewhere. I remember reading did a study where they they, they did this real scientific study about the spam bot networks and stuff, and they actually created um, I forget how they did it, but somehow they they kind of infiltrated the spam bot network and they actually created their own spam, mm-hmm. and they sent this spam out there with a link to a website that had some sort of a product and. They actually, they didn't actually sell anything to anybody, so it wasn't causing harm per se <laughs> to anyone because it was a scientific study. Research, right. But they actually measured how many people who, rec- you know, received. They like they hijacked this spam bot network and they actually used it to send spam. Mm-hmm. But it was their own spam, and it took them to a website to purchase a product. And then they measured how many people went to the buy now 
you know, button, they didn't actually collect credit card information or anything, but they measured how many people would have bought it. Mm -hmm. And it was phenomenal how much money. I mean, yeah. you know, it's exponential because it just goes, you know, a million yeah. computers sending this stuff. S sooner or later, if, if you know, 0.001% of the people buy it, that's then, a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Yeah, it's like something like each, I think it was, if I'm making this up, but if I recall, it was something like, one co infected computer that was infected with a virus would produce uh, $3,000 worth of revenue per month or something like that. So that's why it's worth it for them to create these viruses. They're not Absolutely. just they're not just nasty teenagers, you know, bored or something. There there's real money there. So, anyway, so that's the deal. If that happens, you know, tell if your friend, if it happens to a friend or you, just remember, d go to malwarebytes.org, download the free program, update it, run the scan, disinfect your computer, and, and all the computers that you use. Because remember, it could be your mother-in-law's computer when you were over there for dinner. It could be anybody's computer wherever you logged on. Even if you just logged on once to that computer, um, you know, that's how it can grab your password. So all the computers you touch, make sure that you disinfect them. If I'm using Windows, I actually run a virus scan every single time I use it, right before I use it, because Windows is so completely vulnerable That's to viruses. Kind of, why but, <clears throat> bother? No, I, well, I do, because, home. no, I mean, it happened. Like, I just installed a couple of weeks ago, I installed a brand new, fresh install of Windows, and it had a virus within just minutes of installing it. So that, that definitely happens. But anyway, disinfect it, and then change all your passwords. You know, if you have to use Windows or Mac, that's the advice. The best thing is Ubuntu Linux, but we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> so, anyway, um, let's see. What other topics have I got here that I've been blogging about? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Android. Um, just having issues with Android uh, podcast playback. I blogged about that because... Um, I, when you're using, I don't know, they have these, like, there's this program called Google Listen on the Android phones, and there's another one called Stitcher, and they have issues. Like, Google Listen just seems buggy and uh, confusing, really confusing to use. Stitcher is better, but it doesn't work if there's an interruption in the stream. Like, if you uh, lose your signal for a minute, it just, it loses where yeah, it just has to start all over. It's well, just crazy. I have an iPhone in it. It's not much better. No, all. no, it's not better at all. But the, the <laughs> actually the best way I've figured out so far to listen to podcasts on an Android phone, by the way, if you have an Android phone, which is huge. Android's number two already in smartphone sales, uh, soon to surpass BlackBerry, and it'll be number one, so this is probably relevant to a lot of people. If you ever listen to podcasts on your Android phone, so far this is the best way I've figured out how to do it. They, they promise there are going to be some improvements in these programs like Stitcher and Google Listen. But in the meantime, what I found is actually I just use the Android phone. I go to the website of the podcast. Like I like to listen to Twit TV. So I got Twit, T-W-I-T dot TV, mm -hmm. the website. And I do the link for download this, you know, MP3 or whatever. Right. So I download it, um, either the audio or the video. Uh, just download it from the browser. And on Android, unlike iPhone, you can just download things. And when you download the MP3, it's now like it's in your what they call music player. Or if it's a video, it's in your gallery. So it's almost like on an iPhone, it would be the equivalent of your iPod. So if you download an MP3, it's already on your iPod. Right. Okay. Which doesn't work that way on iPhone, but on this it does. So when well, I. Oh, yeah, it does. Podcasts? Like directly from iTunes. No, yeah, no, that's different. That has to come through iTunes. Right. I'm talking about you go to a website. Like individual. If I go to a website, yeah, if I go to a, uh, just any old website and download an MP3 file, it's now in my player, my yeah, music like if player. If you go to our show, you can download it directly mm -hmm. from our website. Exactly. So anyway, when you download the MP3 directly, now it's in my music player. And what's great about that is, you know, it, it plays and you can, you know, you can... Uh, what do you call it, scrolling, like forward and backwards, and, you know, you missed a part, you know, you got a phone call, you can jump back and so forth. Well, the other thing is, wherever it's at when it's playing, you can pause it, pick it up, resume it later. Even while it's playing, if you reboot the phone, it'll, you go back into the music player, and it remembers Picks exactly where, where you, you left off, off right? Yeah, you which the other ones don't do that. 
You know, like yeah, the that's nice. which I don't understand why. But, I mean, I, I guess I do because the, the the developer from Stitcher contacted me and he explained me, you know, to me a lot of the technical reasons why, which is over our heads. But anyway, they're working on a better version. Uh, I guess it's a limitation of the operating system, but but the music player is is really a brilliant way to do it. If you go to the the website of the podcast, download the MP3 or the video, and just listen to it in the music player it works great plus it's completely offline so you can download it and then get on the airplane mm-hmm. or the subway where there's yeah, no, going to be no signal and you can still listen to it flawlessly even after a reboot it remembers where you were and stuff like that so that's yeah. one of the things I was blogging about hmm. well, I have uh, I'm well I'm very interested in uh, like natural foods and health products and things like that and there's this program that CNN is sponsoring with um, it's coming in June 2nd and 3rd at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and uh, it's basically telling they have a a list they call it the dirty dozen produce that carries like 60 something pesticides residues so basically every time you buy that we're talking about conventional fruits and vegetables uh, and they have like a list of a a dozen that you want to basically strictly stay away from and go for the organic and um, so I wanted to just share that list because I think that you know it's important for you to know at least when you you know what products you should be buying and not and uh, and the the list is basically like really soft fruits and and soft skin fruits and vegetables which is pretty common knowledge uh, but this is like the list of the dirty dozen they call it and um, it's celery peaches strawberries apples domestic blueberries nectarines uh, sweet bell peppers spinach kale and collard greens I guess is part of one and then cherries potatoes imported grapes and lettuce which I'm sure that most people eat at least half of those products on a regular basis so uh, we should I'll be more aware of when we go to buy these conventional fruits and vegetables that we're getting so many toxins in these. So what you're saying we shouldn't eat those or what? I yeah. don't. I don't get. It. We should. Yeah, you should buy the organic version of yeah. those fruits and vegetables. Well, I mean, the other them. ones, the ones that I didn't mention, are not. Don't. I mean, they might have pesticides, but they're more. Uh, they're able to because they have thicker skins and things like that. They're able to protect. Uh, the inner part of the fruit or vegetable, whatever that may be, from the pesticide itself. So when you eat it, you're not eating the pesticide. But these things, like strawberries, you're eating the skin. So you're these, eating the pesticide, everything. These fruits are the, sp- are the ones specifically that are most vulnerable to the pesticides. They have and they the highest amount of pesticides. And we're talking about 63 different kinds in one fruit or vegetable. Wow. It's just like baffling to think that so 63, the, I mean, so God. So what are you supposed to do with this news? You're supposed to buy the organic version. But yeah. if you're not buying the organic version, then what? You, is there any way to wash it enough to get all that off? No. Or you're just mo- saying you, um, shouldn't, you shouldn't ever buy unless those? Unless you're buying farmer's market grade, um, most conventional, which is what you find in a grocery store, uh, that is all high-pressure washed. So if the high pressure wash will not get the pesticide, there's nothing, almost nothing you can do at home to get the pesticide out. So, um, so no, there's not much you can do except go for the organic. That's why. You mean it's high pressure wash before it goes to the store? Right. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah, because that gets out the dirt, and it might rub away some of the water uh, soluble pesticides. So did this study measure this before or after they washed it? After, so they're saying after the high pressure wash, it still had all these pesticides That's on right. it. That's right. Oh, <laughs> so what's the conclusion? The bottom line is you shouldn't ever buy any of these fruits unless they're organic. Yeah, like especially this list of top twelve. That's, That's why hard. at least they've condensed it down to these are the worst offenders. So you want to stay away from. That's them. really hard to do, but and especially in a restaurant. <laughs> you go somewhere for you know dessert or whatever, and you're having you know yeah. ice cream with strawberries. Uh, you know, 
Yeah. What are the chances that the restaurant's buying all organic produce? In well, area? it's um, like I get into the habit of asking if I, especially if it's if I know the owner or, or know who the owner is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can ask the staff, but most people don't know. You know, That's they don't scary. really care, so they don't. Are really we buying know. all organic on all of these things? Yeah, I buy pretty much everything organic. So I don't is there really anything pay that you buy that's not organic? Uh, yeah, I get like uh, like the aloe vera that I buy is not organic, and uh, the pineapple, you know, it's not always organic. Um, avocados, I don't always buy. Them. I mean, there's certain foods. I mean, depending on what's available and ripe and ready, mm-hmm. I mean, if it looks good mm-hmm. to me, I'll buy it. But um, but for the most part, I stick to lettuce. You're always ninety percent organic. Oh um, yeah, lettuce you have to buy, and mm-hmm. you try and stick with the real green lettuce. How much more does organic usually the organic version cost than the um, than the non-organic? Uh, well, I guess there's. I mean, it depends where you what geographic area you're at, but uh, I, I would probably guess like 25 percent. But you're getting like 25 percent more. Yeah, 25 percent more, but you're getting twice as many nutrients. And you're actually getting real nutrients, so you're not going to be uh, hungry. You know, when you're eating these, some of these fruits and vegetables like, um, you know, lettuce, hybrid lettuce or whatever. I mean, there's hardly any nutrients on there, so you're it's like filler basically. So you're not getting hmm. much of nutrients, so you'll be hungry a lot quicker. Mm. So to, I mean, yeah, everyone always talks about the value, you know, the difference in price. But um, I mean, what do you want? Cancer? And then have to pay, you know, expensive healthcare bills mm-hmm. later on in life, or do you want to spend a little more now and get the proper nourishment that your body needs? And the biggest thing is for children. I mean, their brains are very susceptible to these pesticides, and uh, and uh, children are the the ones that stand to lose the most, you know, mm-hmm. uh, as far as yeah. getting you know, these uh, pesticides out of the fruits and vegetables. So. Mm-hmm. Well, as a value, when you talk about value, it's what? Are, why are you eating it? Because if you're eating it for nutrition, then nutrition per dollar, if you do the ratio of nutrition per dollar, it sounds like the organic uh, is, a, is a lot better value. And and as a side bonus, you're not going to get cancer yeah. and all these other things. I mean, and... Sometimes it's very close to the conventional. It's just a matter mm-hmm. of you looking up and seeing what the price is. So mm-hmm. pay attention. <laughs> it's important. Okay. I'd like to take a moment and thank our sponsors. Um, today's show, as I said, is brought to you by Arvix Web Hosting. That's A-R-V-I-X-E. I guess the, the E is silent. It's pronounced Arvix. And... Um, Arvix, we've been using it for a while now, and I really like it. I'm really, really happy. Their motto is reliability, quality, and affordability. Um, you know, excellent server support, along with customer service that's second to none. Free domain for life. And the deal with that is, um, if you sign up for their web hosting, then you'll get one domain, which is like a .com name. Register. You can register it with them free, and they will continue to re- re-register it, renew it every year forever, for life, as long as you keep their web hosting. So you get one free domain registered for life. And then it, you can add additional domains, of course, at very reasonable prices, uh, cheaper, the same or less than anywhere else. And um, their web hosting, hosting is very, very affordable. You uh, pay, if you, especially like if you pay in advance, it's, it comes down to like, some crazy thing like four dollars yeah, a month cheap. or something very very affordable and the best of all is their excellent customer service because right. you can call them 24 hours a day and you're going to get a live human being right here in the u.s who uh, is uh, a technical person who really knows what he's doing and so often you know they'll explain to me how to do it but then he'll offer to just do it you know, and it's faster for him to just do it for me than to tell me how to do it. So, you know, they do. I mean, it's great. And I've actually, you know, tested them. I've actually called them kind of just to see as a test to see, you know, 
um, how good they are, and they are. They're phenomenal. They'll tell you how to do it. It's either you. It's up to you. You. They'll tell you how to do it, and or they'll just do it for you. Whichever is easier, whichever you prefer. They like bend over backwards to do things for you. So usually I want them to show me how to do it so that I can do it. I don't have to bother them. But uh, occasionally there have been times when I'm just really, really busy. I'm running down the street talking on my cell phone, and I just don't have time to do it, but I need it fixed. Um, you know, something set up that I didn't do right, and they'll do it for me like that. Boom. And, it, you know, no questions asked. They're mm-hmm. right. They don't have to transfer you and escalate it to somebody who knows more. They really know what they're talking about. So I love it. Anyway, it's Arvikes. Ar- or it's pronounced Arvix. I always say Arvix, it wrong. Yeah. But it's A R V I X E dot com web hosting. And um, our second sponsor today is BlackbirdNaturals.com, and this goes along with what you were talking about. They have antioxidant superfood fudge truffles. They're very good. (laughs) They're raw vegan uh, cacao truffles made with super high antioxidant superfoods, 100% raw organic vegan ingredients. This is amazing. So whenever you have a sweet tooth... Have one of those, and at least you're eating something that's nutritious, healthy, gives you energy, and um, you know it's not full of sugar. How often can you? Is there a situation in life where something that's you know like a, a fudge truffle is actually good for you? And you know these are you know you you can read all about it. You go to their website, um, they're Blackbird, BlackbirdNaturals.com. But they're actually made with superfoods, like the highest antioxidants, all raw, organic, vegan. They're just amazing. The guy behind it is uh, Anthony Anderson. Of uh, He's a very well-known model and raw, vegan, uh, whatever, advocate. food advocate. And he has a website nice and blog called rawmodel.com. Uh, but uh, you can, you know, he does all kinds of videos and training and education about all these topics. But uh, these truffles are amazing. So check them out. Blackbirdnaturals.com, it's called, the website. And also, if you happen to be in anywhere near Scottsdale, Arizona, or New York City, you'll find them, uh, these Blackbird truffles, on in the cooler at Oakville Grocery Company in Scottsdale or Organic Avenue in New York City. Mm-hmm. So check those or out. Or just order them online and get them in the mail. Exactly, at blackbirdnaturals.com. And then... Finally, we want to uh, uh, you know, thank our third sponsor, and that is ColumbusDanceCenter.com in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Columbus Dance Center is uh, a, a dance school that offers uh, private and group instruction in ballroom, Latin American wedding, dance, dance sport, hip-hop, and many more. No experience or partner necessary, so check them out, ColumbusDanceCenter.com. Perfect. So, moving right along... Let's see. I wanted to. I wanted to bring that. We were talking about Android phones, and this is um, just a, a weird little quirk. I wanted to mention if anybody has uh, an Android phone and also happens to use Twitter, Twitter now has uh, created their own official Twitter application. You know, as you probably know, on the iPhone and on all the, the different phones, there are lots of different Twitter client applications. Right. Well, Twitter decided that. Suddenly, they decided that the, none of those applications were good enough for a, a new beginner, and they were too confusing. So they wanted to uh, they either bought or created their own application. I think in most cases they just bought the application and maybe modified it or whatever. But there's a there's now an official Twitter application for Android, and uh, one of the coolest features about it was that it can use the Android operating system to sync. Like, the Facebook application will sync your contacts with your Facebook contacts, and it'll pull in information like email address and photos and things from Facebook and put it right into your contact address book. Well, the idea behind this uh, official Twitter application for Android was that Mm -hmm. it it optionally will do the same thing. So when you set it up, if you put the check mark in there and you say, sync my Twitter, the people I follow on Twitter, with Mm -hmm. my contacts, then... It's the idea is it's going to pull information in from Twitter and put it into your contacts, which sounds like a good idea on paper, <laughs> but it's probably not usually a good idea unless you only follow a, sh- a few people. Because I, you know, I don't know, I have like it's like ten thousand eight hundred followers or something like some crazy number on Twitter, and I checked that, and 
I couldn't figure out what was wrong with my phone. It was syncing, you know, that little, it looks like a recycle symbol, that circular right. arrow thing was running continuously, like always. Every time I look at my phone, like 24 hours a day, it's always syncing, 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 which slows everything down. If you have an Android, you know that when it's syncing, everything comes, you know, it's going as slow as molasses. It was continuously syncing, and I finally figured out why. It was trying to sync 10,800 people with the uh, my contact address book, and it was oh, it would never finish. It would just go and go and go and go. Oh wow! So there's a tip. So there's the solution, the solution is solution? don't sync it. If you're gonna if you oh, okay. I don't even like the official Twitter application. It's I'm not, I'm not I using it. I haven't used it yet. No, I, I mean I use uh, Seismic or Seismic or something like that. Well, you have an iPhone, and that's completely different. Remember, those are yeah, different. Yeah, I have an iPhone. So well, like there's the official, people that use iPhone out there. <laughs> I know what I'm Lots saying. Of them. What I'm saying is that the the official Twitter application for the iPhone is not going to be the same as the Twitter yeah, application for Android. Yeah, I haven't used it. I have to check it into it. No, but what I'm saying is yeah, I know. that the it's Seismic the for the iPhone is completely different than the Seismic, seismic for, for Android. Android they're, right. they're different. So they have different applications. Even if they have the same name, they're not the same. Mm-hmm. They're different. They're different. They're different versions. Well, they only, that one only works for Facebook, Twitter, and Ping.fm. The Seismic. What? Yeah. Well, Those are the only three, So, which is perfect because I use all three. Mm-hmm. So on tw- on Android, I use um, the ones I like most are Twitdroid and Twitka, Twitka yeah, and uh, I also use uh, what's well and Seismic. Those are the three, but I only use Seismic for Twitter. I don't use it for anything else. So I have Twitdroid, Twitka, and Seismic. I also have the official Twitter application, but I'm I'm really not crazy about it. It seems really Fisher Price to me. But mm-hmm. anyway, if you do use the official Twitter application on Android. Don't set sync it to it. sync. Mm-hmm. Don't set it to sync. Right. Do not set well, it to sync. Why? Unless have you have contacts. unless you have very few people that you follow on Twitter and these and like if you if you only follow your friends on Twitter. Mm-hmm. See, most people don't use Twitter that way. You know, it's right. it's bizarre. But some people use Twitter. Most people use Twitter for the way it was. What I say, the way it was designed to be used for broadcasting to everyone. Right. So they don't friend their friends there only. And uh, so Twitter is primarily for broadcasting just to anyone and everyone. It's not for just connecting to your friends. And Facebook was the opposite. It was just for connecting to your friends. But many people use Facebook for broadcasting to everybody. Yeah. So, like, I use Facebook like Twitter. I I friend absolutely anyone and everyone. I I friend everyone, and I just spew uh, the same exact things. When I tweet something, I use ping.fm, and I I send it to Facebook. The same thing I send to Twitter. Right. And to Buzz and to every other other network out there. Perfect. So, anyway. (laughs) um, Let's see. What other topics? Well, there's a... now that uh, we're headed into the summer uh, of 2010 and everyone wants to go to the beach or is going to be outdoors a lot, um, you know, people are always asking me because I, I never use sunscreen. I never have. And I don't like it. I don't like those minerals on my skin and I don't like the smell. I just And I think it's just bad for you all the way around. Uh, but, um, but an interesting, um, well, there's this organization, uh, let's see. It's called the um, Environmental Working Group. They're a nonprofit, and they do all kinds of research and uh, about health-related topics and how to. It's for consumers, basically. Um, so uh, basically, they say hats, clothing, and and basically sitting in the shade are still the best way to protect yourself from the sun. And uh, the the important thing to know is that the only 8% of sunscreens are recommended by this group, which amounts to about 30 different sunscreens from like 300 and something, uh, 300 different types of sunscreens out in the market. And, uh, and it just goes to prove that, you know, everyone's putting these sunscreens on and they're not really getting the benefit that the, uh, the, the companies that are uh, making these sunscreens uh, are touting and it's amazing because one of these things it says in everyday practice a product labeled SPF 100 which I don't think there is anything in, out of the market but maybe there is it, it performs like an SPF 3.2 did you get that? <laughs> 
So they're advertising. And it's not regulated. They're just they're yeah. making up numbers. It could be SPF yeah, 5000. Yeah, pretty much. Just whatever number you want. If, it, yeah. if it's SPF 30, the rating equates to a really a 2.3 uh, sun protection factor. So what you're getting is not really, or what is you're buying is not really what you're getting. Is that just one case, or is that across the board? Across the board. Every product that's labeled. Only eight. They only recommend eight percent of the sunscreens in the market right now, and uh, and then there's people that are against the minerals, so they buy the the non-mineral, which this particular group doesn't recommend the non-minerals because they have a uh, what they call like a hormone uh, activating substances. Uh, and now I think a lot of these companies are putting, uh, there was some study out and that said that vitamin A was really good to put in the sun, uh, SPF creams, which uh, new studies are coming out that it's, it increases your risk of cancer uh, uh, by adding, by this vitamin A that's added to the SPF. So take a look at your SPFs and, and you might want to go to this environmental working group. It's ewg.org. They have an actual uh, sunscreen guide, so they have all the different brands. You can put in the brands that you have, and you can see why they would recommend it or not. And this is a nonprofit organization, and they're out looking for our best interests. So it's valuable information. I think you should check it out. I read, uh, I don't know, it was years ago. I remember reading something in Consumer Reports about the what was the highest highest SPF was. 20 or something like that at some point? At that or time, 10? maybe, yeah. What was it? 10 or 20? There was well, it some when you number. Read it. I forgot. I think maybe it was 10 or something like that. And um, I can't remember. But anyway, I remember they, they said that any SPF factor higher than 10 or 20, whatever it was, um, there was no such thing. That, that anything higher than that, they were just actually adding other chemicals. These chemicals that may cause cancer yeah. that they add to the thing and then they just arbitrarily say oh that's SPF you know 12 yeah. now and 14 yeah that, I remember that that was like maybe 10 or 15 years ago they were so talking about that I've always and been pretty very much, skeptical about yeah, SPF still, numbers yeah it still holds true pretty much it's just that you know now people you know the consumers are really starting to become very very savvy about all this and and with the internet now, you can't hide this stuff. So um, it's just a matter of being in the know and knowing... But how is a consumer supposed to know that adding vitamin A, which sounds good, okay, a vitamin, how bad can that be, that that actually is bad, that actually causes cancer? I mean, how you have to do a lot of homework. Yeah, yeah, really I don't know, know really. I mean, I don't know <laughs> what to tell you about that. Most people are not that interested in it, but if they hear yeah. a little excerpt from someone like me... They might think about it a little more and make some gradual changes for the better. Personally, what I do is I just I, I minimize my exposure to the sun. I don't put yeah. anything on because I don't like I don't like any sticky creams of any kind anyway. Mm -hmm. So if I go to the beach, I take a big umbrella and right. I stay mm -hmm. under the big umbrella. I get enough sun with just the indirect exposure, just walking around that um, is, is more than enough because they, you only need like 15 minutes a day to have the, your, you know, the vitamin, vitamin D, D that you need and um, that's enough and, that's and right. so if I stay basically you know if, I, if I'm only in the sun during the walking period the moving around and when I'm sitting I'm in the shade I figure that's enough sun protection for me I'm, I'm sh in the shade yeah. well there's you know, die hard people and the, the other flip side of that or the other side of that is that you know they go into this false sense of security that they have this high SPF yeah. so they end up staying out in the sun longer exactly. and most people don't even use it as as uh, well, that's as they exactly ask you to do it, but I don't recommend it at all. That's exactly what Mimi was saying the other day when we were going to the beach. We're going. To, I said, well, there's no way I cannot just lay on the beach for six hours or eight hours because I know some people like to do that. And she's like, well, just put, just lather on that SPF 50. And I'm like, oh no, uh -uh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because even if I did that, it's it's not good for you. That stuff is bad for you. I know. And if you miss one little spot, that's all it takes. That spot is going to be like blistered and yeah. burned, and oh no, no, no. I'd much rather just, you know, sit under a big umbrella on a cool <laughs> drink, you know. I know people, um, 
our, our friends in Miami, um, Samuel and Dieter. <laughs> Samuel was very, very, very dark skinned, and Dieter's like white, you know, pale, pale. And uh, Dieter was always in the shade, always in the shade. And yeah, that's, there's, that's, you know, that's the thing. If you have really, really, really fair skin, and you just cannot stand exposure to the sun they just they can still hang out by the pool and on the yeah. beach but they just have to be under the umbrella in the shade right. and there's yeah. nothing in fact i think it's much more pleasant i like oh, yeah. being in the direct sun a little bit you know and walking around playing in the water but when i'm just laying there i'd much rather be in the shade yeah well that's the only way that i can get my mom or my sister to go to the beach is i have to tell them i'll get you a a nice comfortable chair and a big umbrella yeah. and just sit right there yeah. and hang out while I'm in the sun and everybody used fun. to think the sun was so healthy but it, we're finding that it's a little bit like everything in in little bit in moderation it's healthy but anything more than that is not yeah. healthy it's actually yeah damaging. you do need it I mean uh, there's a high high rate of vitamin D deficiency um, in this country and in the world, actually, so um, it's yeah. important to get some type of sunlight. Fifteen minutes, though. Um, yeah, fifteen minutes. That's all you really need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any more than fifteen minutes, and it's more. It's but it's too, a recreational thing, so I mean, you yeah. can be out there for a while, and people work out there, so it's yeah, it's important to understand these things. Yeah, that's cool. So. Let's see. I was just going to go through my Twitter thing. You know, um, this was this video. Actually, you turned me on to this video. I'm sure everybody's heard of TED Talks. There, It's TED.org, TED.org. Well, there was um, a video. Um, let me open it up. That uh, that you actually sent to me. It's uh, a TED Talk by Joanna Bla- Blakely. And it's called Lessons from Fashion's Free Culture. And... I love this video. I didn't yeah, at first I didn't know what it was about because I'm not really into fashion, whatever necessarily. But um, it's fantastic. If you get a chance, go to TED.org and just uh, you know do a search for uh, free culture. You'll probably find it if you don't know how to spell Joanna Blakely. Or we'll put a link. Just go to breadtv.org. I'm putting my saying breadtv.com. B r e d t v dot com, and uh, we'll put a link on there. But anyway. She does this fantastic talk about um, the fashion industry and also many, many other industries. She talks about you know, a bunch of different industries and how they compare when it comes to what we call free culture, which means um, the fashion industry, uh, it's absolutely okay and legal for them to copy each other. So if you're, you know, a, a top fashion designer, you can just go out and look at all the other fashions and you can absolutely pick and choose and take whatever you want from whatever you want and do your own remix and put your name on it and now it's yours. The only, they don't have patent protection, almost none at all. They have uh, well, they, no copyright protection. Right. The only thing they have is trademark protection, right. which uh, so that you can trademark your name, Christian Dior or whatever. But but literally, Christian Dior can go and take all the designs. They can take an exact replica of somebody else's design and put Christian Dior name on it, and now it's Christian Dior. It's, you know, the, the trademark is theirs, but the actual styles and the ideas and the designs and, and the creativity of it is absolutely freely copied and it's always been that way in that industry yeah, that's why they have like h&m and old navy so, and stuff they pretty much copy gap so you, and all these other designers yeah they copy the high-end designers and, make it cheap. and then sell them cheap right but the, but the thing the gist of this uh talk is about how that actually benefits the entire industry the the, the uh culture of freely copying each other actually increases the creativity and it increases the profits so anyway you gotta go you gotta watch this video i can't yeah i was interested in the graphs she she puts out a graph of uh the different types of industries whether it's the movie industry fashion uh don't give it away don't give it away okay that's the punchline but I, i want you to watch the video because it's uh she does a much better job than we could of explaining it but just go to ted dot is it ted dot org TED.com, um, actually. TED.com. TED.com, and type in, uh, you know, look for Joanna Blakely Lessons from Fashion's Free Culture, or just go to breadtv.com, and we'll have a link to it. But it's a fantastic little video. Yeah. It's only like 15 minutes long, but it's brilliant. 
And it's a lot of the same stuff you've been talking about for years about mm-hmm. all this. So. Exactly. That's why it's, it's just a so different uh, twist because it's you're looking at it from a different industry, which we're not, you know, we or we've never made those two connections, but it's a very important connection. Exactly. Exactly. Um, also, you know, I wanted to to mention this or take a moment just to mention this that. Um, we are set up now for our uh, little Skyposaurus uh, system here. We can bring up someone on Skype, full screen, right here behind us. There, this could be you, <laughs> your name here. Um, you can call us during the live show. You can actually call us on Skype at BreadChat. The Skype name is B R E D C H A T, um, and and actually, like we can do a call in kind of a thing. But otherwise, you can actually be a guest co-host with us on an episode, uh, you know, be a guest co-host for a day. And if you're interested in doing that, please, uh, you know, give us a call. You don't have to do, um, what I'm trying to say is, if you want to call in, obviously you have to do it live when we're taping. But if you want to be a guest co-host for a day, uh, let us know and we'll schedule it ahead of time. And you can actually sit in and be a guest co-host for the for the show, the whole show with us. Mm-hmm. So um, if you're interested in doing that, just go to um, breadtv.com and uh, click on contact us. Or just send an email to breadchat at gmail.com. B-R-E-D-C-H-A-T at gmail.com. Send us an email and let us know that you may be interested in being a guest co-host with us for a day. That'll be fun because we'll have a lot, lots, lots to talk about. A little Please. more uh, twist to different stories, I guess. Sure, yeah. It's always Add great. Add some... Uh, Bounce ideas back and forth between multiple people. Info. Right. It's all good. Exactly. So, um, well, let's see. Do we have time for one more thing? Uh, try not to do anything too too controversial here. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going through my Twitter feed. Sometimes I tweet things that are like, eh. Well, I mean, this isn't controversial, I guess. Um, I, I was musing about this this morning. And that is the um, the irony of science. What modern science is revealing to us um, as fact that that every human being alive today goes back to the same old oldest 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 ancestral mother. Okay, a little black lady in Africa. Okay, so your mother's, you know, it's not necessarily your mother's, but your, you know, your mother, your father's mother's mother's, whatever. Every human being alive, if you trace back their family tree far enough, they all go back to one woman, one mother of all hu- human beings alive mm-hmm. today, mm-hmm. of every race, every religion, every nationality in the whole entire planet, has one ancestral farthest back mother okay and they know that she's a little black woman about this tall right from and she was in africa so the point of this is i mean we've known this for a while actually if you're right. if you're up on you know if you watch the discovery channel and the history channel all that stuff you you know this stuff but um as long as you don't doubt you know the genetic science of today um then you believe that but all of a sudden this morning i don't know why i was in the shower and it just hit me i was like wow the the irony of this to think this okay that hitler's mother's 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 mother was a little black lady in africa (laughs) and every jew every jew alive on the planet then and today their mother's 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 mother was a little black lady in africa yeah and every human being of every race and every religion and every whether they're you know, religious fanatics of any religion or racists of any race, whatever, every human being alive on the planet goes back to the same mother, ultimately. Yeah, that's that's just, hard to believe, but... It's mind-boggling. I think most people just kind of process that and don't really believe it, or I don't understand, because they don't... Maybe it's like, uh, you know, the distance to the farthest star, it's like, whatever, billions and billions and billions. And it was so, so long ago, it does have that have to do anything with me, but... People well, that we're all cousins. We're all related. We're all one. We're all I mean, one. we're we're not yeah. just we're not just family in the uh, you know uh, whatever. Uh, what am I trying to say? Like poetic sense. We're family in the literal sense. In the absolutely literal sense, we're all cousins. I mean, we're all sleeping with our cousins in a sense. We're all related, literally. 
And that is mind-boggling to me because, you know, it's just like anything to do with religious extremism or anything to do with racism, it just makes it totally laughable. And I think what, and this was the thought that came to me, is what must um, racists think about science? Like, this is... uh, (laughs) This is really going against their beliefs. Well, I think that's why people don't initially can yeah. grasp that idea. It's hard. It's a hard one to grasp. Well, I don't <laughs> know. To me, it's easy to grasp. It, it just makes perfect sense. And it's like, duh, of course. It's like, no wonder we're all the same. If you travel around the world and you see all the different cultures and the different things, we have so much more in common than we have different right. that it, it absolutely, absolutely makes sense to me. But to... Most people, you know, they're just, you know, they only go by the wrapping. Is it a bright, shiny object or is it a, you know, whatever. You know, they just go by the outside and and the the weird little idiosyncrasies. Like, what color is their hair, you know? It's just so superficial. But that's how, I guess maybe that's part of human nature. Who knows? <laughs> well, anyway, we better wrap it up because we're out of time so Mm -hmm. um, definitely uh, send us an email breadchat at gmail.com and let us know if you want to be a a guest host for the day and uh, stay tuned 10 a.m. Eastern Time that's New York City Time 10 a.m. 7 a.m. in in, uh, LA you can go to breadtv.com and click on the link and it'll tell you what time it is in your city but Monday through Friday 10 a.m. New York Time every day we'll be here and we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow yes please give us your questions we'd love to uh Take a stab at them and see what we can come up with. Thanks. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye-bye.